Opposition leaders in Senegal are protesting the move to postpone elections that had been set for February 25th. Some analysts say the delay hurt Senegal's reputation as a beacon of democracy. VOA's Nairobi Bureau Chief Mariama Diallo has this story. Senegal's President Macky Sall announced the delay this past weekend, saying it was necessary because of allegations of corruption in elected related cases and the disqualification of some leading candidates, including Usman Sonko, who came third in the 2019 elections, and Karim Wad, son of former President Abdoulaye Wad. Lloyd Kuveya, assistant director at the Center for Human Rights in the Faculty of Law at the University of Pretoria in South Africa, spoke to VOA via Skype. Some people are saying uh, because of the chaos <clears throat> that is uh, prevailing uh, in, in Senegal, where some opposition party leaders are in, are in, uh, are in prison, including Songo, uh, which is really disturbing. Therefore, the election would not be a legitimate election without uh, some of the heavyweights, political heavyweights, contesting in the election. Presidential elections in Senegal will now take place in December after the nation's parliament voted Monday to delay the polls that were supposed to take place on February 25th. Opposition leaders rejected the move, including Anta Baba Karngom, presidential candidate for the alternative for the citizen succession. She says, this is President Macky Sall's balance sheet, and it's upsetting because he almost left with his head held high but now, unfortunately, he's showing his true face. It's a constitutional coup, and we won't accept it. The parliamentary voting process was chaotic, as some opposition lawmakers were escorted out by security forces as they tried to block the vote. In July, following deadly clashes protesting a possible run for third term by President Saul, he finally said he would not seek one. Kuveya says it looks like Sal is still enjoying the sweetness of power and wants to stay a little longer. Can we really trust Maki Sal, especially after everybody knows that he had intentions for going for third term? And uh, if, it had, if it hadn't been for the protests of the people of, of, of Senegal, I, I am quite sure that uh, you know he would have uh, gone ahead to change the constitution and get the Supreme Court uh, to endorse that unconstitutional change. Kuveo says President Saul knew that elections were supposed to take place on February 25th and had ample time to prepare. You have five years in which to prepare for that for, for elections. You have five years in which to ensure that there's a conducive environment in which elections are going to be held. You have five years to allow the uh, political participation of any person who wants to contest for political power. Senegal has always been seen as a beacon of democracy in a region plagued by coups. Our Jean Morel, CEO of France at Senegal, an NGO active in Senegal in the field of education, spoke to VOA via WhatsApp on Tuesday. It comes as a big shock. It's very sad because Senegal is losing this image of being an island of democracy in West Af Western Africa and its credibility too. When one sees that what, what is happening in the other country of the sub-region like Niger, Mali, or Burkina Faso, or what happened years ago, for example, in Ivory Coast, it's really frightening. On Monday, two opposition parties filed a court petition challenging the election delay. Maria Magyalou, VOA News, Nairobi. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken is meeting today with Egyptian and Qatar leaders amid a push for a new temporary ceasefire in Gaza and on an increase in humanitarian aid for Palestinian civilians. Blinken met with Egypt's President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi in Cairo as he continued his fifth visit to the Middle East since the outbreak of the war in Gaza between Israel and Hamas. Blinken is hoping to press ahead with a potential ceasefire deal and post-war planning while tamping down regional tensions. His visit also comes amid growing concerns in Egypt about Israel's stated intentions to expand the combat in Gaza to areas on the Egyptian border that are crammed with displaced Palestinians. Egypt has warned that an Israeli deployment along the border would threaten the peace treaty the two countries signed over four decades ago. Blinken began his trip yesterday in Saudi Arabia. He also has stops scheduled in Israel 
and the Israeli occupied West. Zimbabwe's ruling party ZANU PF emerged winner of Saturday's February 3rd by elections held in Mashonarand, East Province. The party secured significant victories in several key constituencies, including Seke and Golomonzi South, and even achieved a clean sweep in the Malondera district. When general elections were last held, ZANU PF was 10 seats short of the two thirds majority in parliament. Now, after a series of disputed by elections, it has attained that goal. ZANU PF now holds 190 seats in the National Assembly. Securing the supermajority in the 280 member parliament, the party moved closer to changing the constitution if it wishes. The election came amid a political crisis in the country, which has been glowing since the group of MPs with the main opposition season's coalition for change at CCC had their seats declared vacant in October. Just over two years at the helm of the citizens' coalition for change, opposition leader Nasoni Chamisar announced on January 25th he was leaving the opposition party, saying it has been hijacked by the ruling party.